Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Saturday of the month, which means it's time for the Culinary Medicine Show with Dr. Colin Zhu, the chef doc. Is he a chef? Is he a doctor? Well, you're going to find out. This is perfect today because if you watched the show yesterday, one of his colleagues at Love Life Telehealth, Dr. Nikki Davis, did a wonderful PowerPoint presentation, which I recommend you watch, about not having any excuses and how you can easily transition to a whole food plant-based diet. Well, here's the next step how to set up, and how to organize your healthy kitchen. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Colin Zhu. This is such, this is so perfect that you guys followed each other. We couldn't have planned it. I am, oh, you mean like follow like sequentially? The yeah, it just, it, I mean, we didn't <laughs> plan it. It just worked out that day, that way. So I'm very happy to see it. So, so you're not, you're not in your chef coat today. I am not. I am not. I am in, in uh, active wear, but I still keep keep my theme colors. So, you know, <laughs> everything is uh, nice. nice. <laughs> Everyone, uh, it's good to see you. Chef AJ, thank you so much. Happy Saturday uh, to you. Happy Saturday to everyone that's watching morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, wherever you're, um, you know, hailing from. So, uh, so today, as uh, Chef AJ is saying, uh, I'm not in my coat today because I'm not demonstrating a recipe. What I've decided to do was to kind of bring it back to the basics. And um, I think it's very important uh, to really remind and reinforce basics. You know, um, you can never overstate this. I'm sure Chef AJ can agree um, in terms of, you know, how do we keep things, you know, organized? And, um, and, uh, you know, um, keeping things organized is very, very important. You know, when I went to school, uh, that was the first thing. It was understanding how the kitchen worked, uh, where everything was, um, you know, how things are set up. Uh, this concept of mise en place, which is French for getting everything together, was really hammered, you know, into us um, during training. And so um, I wanted to kind of show you guys around my kitchen. Uh, my kitchen is you know, by no means perfect, um, but it's important to kind of remind people and reinforce the concepts of just organization, uh, knowing where everything is, because whether you're meal prepping, uh, meal prepping or cooking for yourself or for a party, for a potluck, for a get together, reunion, what, what have you, it's important to know where things are because I really enjoy efficiency. Um, and I think if the more efficient you are in your kitchen, um, the better you are prepared and you're not scrambling, you know, you're not scrambling, you know, where's, you know, where's my spatula, you know, where's my slotted spoon, where's these knives, you know, where's the ingredients and you're, you're not in a frenzy because the kitchen can be a very chaotic, you know, place, whether it's, you know, yourself or you're cooking with others. So I decided to, you know what, let's just tour <laughs> my place and, um, you know, I'm going to show you my, you know, what's in my fridge how I typically organize things, uh, my freezer, okay? I'm gonna take you through my walk-in uh, pantry and uh, my spice rack and also how I set up uh, my cutting board. Um, I think that's very, very important to talk about as well. And then I can answer any and all questions that either Chef AJ has or um, anyone live uh, may come on. So, but before I do that, I want to introduce uh, a family member uh, to uh, our family and uh, a team member to uh, the Chef Doc uh, brand. So, Norto, come here, come here. Okay, baby. All right. So this is Naruto, okay? Uh, say hi, everyone. Hi. The <laughs> last time horrible. I showed him, I, I think I, it was how last you, week. How do you spell his name? Because you're telling me he has an Instagram page. We need to follow him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, uh, his name is uh, N, as in Nancy, N-A-R-U-T-O. And uh, his Instagram account is Naruto Zhu, Z-H-U. And uh, yeah, so he is the chief positivity officer. Um, of the chef doc, you know, he's, his job is to create positivity for everyone and to spread, you know, health and health is wealth awareness. That's his job of the campaign. So, and uh, yeah, <laughs> anyone love cats, you know, here he is. <laughs> oh my God. Even if they didn't love cats, they'd have to love that kitty. <laughs> uh, so in, in case you hear him in the background, he just wants to be in front of the camera. So he can't, uh, so occasionally you might see him. Last time I showed him, he was in a cone. So now he's out of a cone. Okay, 
So um, another thing I wanted to show you is if for you guys that don't know who I am, um, so I'm a family general medicine practitioner, uh, board certified family medicine um, and uh, lifestyle medicine, and I specialize in culinary medicine. And some of the origins of how I came about into cooking uh, really started in the beginning. So I'm going to share with you super, super embarrassing photos um, of when I was younger. And uh, oh, where's the camera? Okay, so this is me. Uh, what year is this? This is 93. You remember photographs, Chef AJ, where they actually have the timestamp, you know, on the photos? Okay. Yeah. Oh my this God. Is a that haircut, man. That haircut <laughs> is hilarious. Yeah. So this is, do you remember Play Doh, Chef AJ? I loved Play Doh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> This is, uh, this is where, so I started off really young. I was really blessed to have, um, you know, parents that cooked. And so I emulated them. This is, I'm going to embarrass my sister too. So this is me and my sister. So she either talked on the phone or she just, you know, consumed whatever I served her. Um, but she didn't, I don't think she ate any Play-Doh, hopefully not. So, um, so I started off young. Both my parents cooked, very, very comfortable. And uh, that's how I got started. Okay. So first we're going to talk about, um, you know, the refrigerator. So number one thing, uh, one of my favorite rooms um, is the, the kitchen, right? And uh, it's very important to, you know, know how your refrigerator is set up. Now everyone has different refrigerators, right? You have um, kind of like washer and dryers. You have front loading, you have, you know, uh, top loading, right? And it makes a difference, you know? Um, so I have the refrigerator that opens up, you know, like this, right? So like this, and the, the freezer is on the side. And I, I'm going to show you why this is important. So I think I talked about this in the last sessions where um, how many percent of Americans, you know, contribute towards food waste? You know, we food waste um, is a huge problem in America. Upwards of 30 to 40% of Americans throw and waste their food, you know, away. And why this is important is because not only are you losing money, I mean, we've talked about, you know, budgeting tips in the past, but not only are you losing money, okay, the hard earned money that you're, you know, spending in your jobs and your careers and all that, but you're also contributing towards landfills, right? And guess how, what, what percentage of, um, greenhouse emissions those food waste contribute can anyone guess chef aj do you know I, this 20 percent. i don't know i don't know <laughs> it's actually six to eight okay, percent of greenhouse gases of emissions at food waste alone now it's not just the stuff that we throw from our refrigerators we throw food away from um, manufacturing and processing. So whenever we go from the farmland, the agricultural lands, and to you know the processing plants, and we're throwing out things that don't look right or does look ugly, um, you know, there's a lot of waste, you know, contributing to that. And if you look at the groceries, you know, groceries, you know, they're all pretty, right? The conventional groceries, um, you know, the high-end groceries, they have pretty produce. And so the ugly produce, where does it go? It goes to the landfills when it doesn't look right, but it's actually still good. Nowadays, um, you know, on the West Coast, I know Chef AJ knows this chain called Rouse. You know, Rouse, for example, is kind of like Kroger's on the Midwest and the East Coast. It's kind of like Publix in the Southeast. Um, you know, they have, typically they'll have like a section just for ugly produce. They're called upcycled, um, you know, produce where they just reduce the price, reduce the markings down to like, I can get a bag of ugly produce, like three or four bell peppers, green, yellow, orange in the ugly produce. And it's reduced to like 99 cents a bag. Do you know how much that costs if it were pretty on the shelves? At least four to five times more the markup. Okay. And so one tip is, is to, uh, you know, visit these types of actual, you know, um, uh, sections. Okay. So my refrigerator, nothing, nothing really, really fancy. Okay. I'm going to flip the camera. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So my refrigerator, the reason why it's different is that, you know, when you have the freezer on top, right? You actually have to, the refrigerators that are freezers up top, you have to bend down low, right? And so the problem with, um, the problem with uh, 
refrigerators that have the freezers on top is that you have to bend down low. And what ends up happening is that if you don't check in the back, all right, if you don't check in the back, they, you know, food is going to spoil. Okay. So you have to make it a habit. My suggestions is to make it a habit to kind of bend down low to kind of check the ones that are in the back. Okay. Mine doesn't have the freezer on top. So mine, the freezer is over here. Okay. So organization is going to be different. Okay. I, um, generally speaking, um, so, you know, I share, I share the refrigerator with, you know, my folks and, you know, you're going to see all kinds of different things, right? I'm 100% whole food plant-based. Not all my family members are, right? They're getting towards there on a spectrum. You may have that kind of similar situation in your household, right? Not everyone's going to be vegan or whole food plant-based, right? So you're going to be sharing. So it's important to kind of organize it, you know, as such. You know, when I counsel and coach my patients um, and clients, um, I tell them like, you know, you kind of have to, you know, make their own, you know, uh, section and organize it. So a lot of times I, you know, put the produce, you know, um, in these bins. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit empty today, but, you know, I throw, throw the uh, produce in, in the bins here. Um, I like to use, um, I don't know what you use chef AJ, but I like to use, um, these, uh, absorbers. These are moisture absorbers. Okay. So sometimes, um, you know, when you, uh, absorb moisture, it decreases the rate of it going bad. Okay. Um, these are lemons down here. Okay. Make sure if you use something like this to wash them every now and then, because sometimes mold will develop. Okay. So you have to pay attention. Okay. Another good way of keeping produce uh, fresh is um, I like using paper bags. Okay. Or you can use, um, you can use sil silicone uh, containers or Pyrex. Okay. Like for example, like for example, like I use uh, 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 Pyrex uh, glasses. Okay, vacuum seal. Okay, that that helps a lot. Okay, um, I'm not a fan. I'm giving you an example of this, but I'm not a fan of putting produce within plastic bags. My dad does this. Okay, and no matter how many times I tell him to not to do this, he still does this. So, um, and so. <laughs> What happens is that, as you can see, there's a lot of moisture that builds up here, right? And over time, this, uh, this produce will, you know, get bad, you know, quicker, okay? Same thing with this. I try to remove the plastic um, out of this, but, you know, sometimes you just have to keep up, okay? Um, sometimes there's a lot of bowls um, that, uh, that you can put, okay? And then these are silicone uh, lids, okay? So my number one tips for these, and, and then also we have different kinds of like condiments and, you know, different types of milks right here. So, um, you know, it's organization, you know, matters, you know, a lot. Okay. And then let me, let me see. All right. So we're just this. Okay. So this is the freezer. Okay. So the freezer um, is going to be one of your best friends. And the reason why it's going to be one of your best friends is that, you know, if you're not a person that shops a lot, right, you don't like going to the grocery stores. Some people don't, right? Um, what I highly recommend is getting frozen vegetables, uh, frozen fruit. The reason why is because um, it keeps longer. It's a freezer. Uh, nutritionally, you know, it's uh, picked at peak, Right. And nowadays, you know, it's just, you can get almost anything in the frozen aisle, okay? So, so for example, if you go to a wholesale club, you know, you can get things like this. You know, this is um, kind of like, a, you know, this is like a Napoleon, you know, type of combination. Um, so you have, you know, orange and, uh, orange and yellow carrot, broccoli, cauliflower, right? Your cruciferous vegetables here. We make a lot of smoothies. Um, so I'll put like tropical fruits, like, you know, uh, mangoes, um, there's blueberries here somewhere, uh, carrots. Um, so we make a lot of dumplings. Um, so mom and I, you know, on one day of the week, we'll make a lot of dumplings and we, we freeze them. Okay. So, and then uh, if you use, uh, if you use, uh, like the organic, you know, bread or the sprouted bread. Sometimes, you know, I'll, we'll put them in here as well. Um, things like butternut squash. Um, I make a lot of soups as well. So, you know, this helps to cut down on prep. Um, that would help as well. Um, and so, yeah, so the freezer, 
the freezer is going to be, you know, uh, your best friend in terms of, you know, getting things going. So let's move any questions from that. I'm going to move to the walk-in pantry. I'm going to flip the camera. No, I won't flip the camera. Oh, okay. All right, so Naruto is going to come with us. All right, so this is my walk-in pantry. Now, I understand that not many people have a walk-in pantry, but I think a walk-in pantry is very um, ideal, um, you know, because you can store more stuff. Now, what kind of stuff is recommended to put into a walk-in pantry would be your dry goods, your bulk items. Uh, whenever you go into the grocery aisles, like, for example, uh, Publix has this, I know. Uh, Kroger has this, I know. Rouse, I know, has this. And even your Whole Food Clubs, they'll have a bulk aisle, okay? I would probably say to load up as much as you can in the bulk aisle, okay? Um, best things to kind of load up on are, you know, dry whole grains, different types of whole grains. Um, so let's see. And uh, beans, legumes, Okay you decrease costs. Okay. You decrease costs. Um, when you get them in bulk, um, it's just, you know, way cheaper. Um, so bulk aisles, if you go to ethnic, you know, markets like an Indian market, Mexican market, supermarkets, um, certain types of beans and legumes and grains will be, you know, really, really reduced. Okay. So these are, and I put them in jars. I take out the plastics and I put them in jars to make sure you label them. So these are yellow split peas. Um, these are, you know, mung beans, right? And I like to put them in glass jars because it helps to identify pretty quickly, right? These are um, hemp seeds, right? Um, these are these are dried, you know, wild mushrooms. I, I love mushrooms. These are oh, these are uh, red lentils. These are great. Uh, I make a lot of Ethiopian dishes. Um, and then also same thing with nuts, right? So things like this, walnuts, Chef AJ, I know these are your favorite, you know, <laughs> good old, so good you old keep dates. You keep dates at room temperature. Yeah, I yep. keep them room temperature. They, 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 they actually don't go bad. Where do you keep them? No, I do too. I just, I know oh. some people have refrigerated them. Yeah. Um, they, they last for a while, surprisingly. Um, these are, these are black sesame seeds. Yeah, it's so great. I have a walk-in pantry now and it's like the best. It really is. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's really awesome. Hey buddy. Okay. So, um lots of oats. My dad loves oats, okay? Um let me see what else. Pa uh different types of so chia seeds, right? Chia seeds are good here. Uh, flax seeds are good here. Um Let's see. Yeah, there you go. Flax seeds. Um, I have cacao powder here. Um, and um, let me see what else. Teas. Teas. If you're a tea drinker, definitely, definitely uh, uh, store them here. We got some baking powder, baking soda, um, all kinds of stuff. The point is, is that you want to be able to label them, you know, take them out of the packaging, label them, get into the habit of labeling them. When we were in school, um, you know, especially in the walk-in freezer, you know, the big commercial walk-in freezer, you remember that chef AJ, you have to label <laughs> everything. You have to label everything to a T you have to date them. You have to time stamp them like everything, you know, um, because you need to know when things go bad. And I think it's a really cool practice to be able to, um, it's a really cool practice to, uh, to do that for your fridge and your freezer as well. Okay. What though? Um, so, so another thing here too, let me shift the camera a little bit. So I have, um, so I have like, kind of like, um, what I set up here is like, you know, a rack and then I have baskets. Okay. So here, like, for example, I keep all my Indian spices here. Okay. So I have like garam masala, I have uh, cumin powder. Um, I keep them all in one basket. So it keeps it and makes it really organized. These are red chili. Okay. This is amaranth. So 
this is amorth right here. Um, turmeric powder, okay. I, la I make sure I label things because they can easily be um, baking, uh, baking stuff here. Um, we make a lot of uh, Chinese uh, soups. Um, so it's different kinds of, um, you know, vegetables and beans. Um, like for example, this is, uh, what is this called? So these are like dried lily flowers. Um, see, these are mung beans. Norto, what are you doing? Um, let's see. We make we do a lot of noodles, so we have a lot of Korean uh, supermarkets. Um, so, for example, these are sweet potato noodles. Okay. For those who are a fan wait, of wait, what are sweet uh, potato uh, noodles? Do tell what are yeah, sweet really potato noodles? These are this is a Korean thing. So, um, so basically, yeah, these are amazing. Actually, uh, they make really good stir fry. Um, the only ingredient is sweet potato starch and water. That's it. You know, That's amazing. Where, where do you get those? Like at a Korean market? Yeah. So do you, have you ever heard of um, 99 Ranch or H Mart? I've heard of it when I lived in Southern California. I'm going yeah. to have it up here. That is really cool. So H Mart is a Korean supermarket, is a huge supermarket. So they would have plenty of this. If you go to an Asian market, typically you would find this, but this is more of like a Korean thing. Um. And then the Vietnamese, um, they have uh, mung, uh, they have like glass noodles, right? So glass noodles, verme vermicellis, right? So this is made of mung bean, okay? Um, and different things. What, buddy? What? What? Um, yeah, so a pantry is awesome. A pantry is awesome in terms of just really keeping um, just your dry goods um, going. Let's see. Anyone have any questions with a, a pantry? And mostly questions about the kitty. You know, can we see him again? Can we see his home? See again. No, but there is a question. Aaron says, what foods do you have an overflow of? An overflow? What does that mean? And maybe, I don't know, maybe like a lot of extra? Mm, maybe she means like, uh, what kinds of foods do you have um, a lot of that you use regularly. So okay. um, we, we get a lot of oats. Um, we, we have a lot of brown rice. Like this is about to go, go we have to go get more. Um, we buy a lot of quinoa. Let's see if we can find quinoa. I'm probably out of quinoa. Um, we stock up a lot on flax seeds, chia seeds. Um, here are some chickpeas. Um, here are some goji berries. Um, we go to Costco and we get the raw, um, you know, raw like walnuts, almonds. Um, I make a lot of smoothies and when I don't have time to incorporate as many veggies and fruit as much as possible, you know, my smoothie recipe is, you know, a couple handfuls of greens, uh, some ginger, some garlic. Uh, one banana, two apples, um, and I throw in nuts. I throw in flax seeds, chia seeds, fla um, hemp seeds, um, and I throw in either like walnuts or almonds, you know, things like that. I incorporate as much as I can. Uh, Dr. Gregor's, you know, daily dozen, you know, we try to keep it balanced as much as possible. Because once, what I find, find with um, vegetarians, vegans, or whole food plant-based is that they kind of when they get into a routine, they kind of just concentrate on certain groups. I don't know if you find this, Chef AJ, but they kind of just, you know, overemphasize the things that they know and they don't go for a balance or diversity. So whenever I teach people and coach people in terms of eating more plant-based, it's important to get the whole breadth and uh, diversity of, um, of, of the plant kingdom, you know, and that includes, you know, all your beans and legumes, whole grains. Yes, buddy, you want to say hi again? All right. All right. He says, he says, make sure that you eat a good balance and diversity of all your plants. Okay. So how do you get any even, work done when your cat's that cute? I can't get any, I can't get any work done. I can't get any work done. <laughs> I make him see patients. <gasps> oh. I make him see patients. Oh, he has to, he has to earn his keep. Okay. Um, 
And so next to, next to, um, you know, my pantry, okay, and pantry's here, you have a bookshelf, okay? So always cool to have a bookshelf. Um, here is our coffee station. Um, this is where my Vitamix lives. Uh, my dad has a Keurig. Um, I use a coffee grinder. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but coffee grinder and a spice grinder. Um, essentially, they're almost the same thing. You know, um, if you want to grind grind up um, uh, certain uh, certain uh, spices, it's always good to have a spice grinder. And then um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a convection um, oven. So um, let's see, let's move to the spice rack. A convection oven, and does that have air fryer capability? Um, let's see. No, this does not. My, uh, my Ninja does. So when we were cooking, um, what were we cooking before? We were cooking a curry before, um, which is over there. Um, that has pressure cooker, um, air frying capabilities, um, everything, you know, whoa, whoa. Uh, for that. So hey, hey, what's going on? Sorry about that. Hey, Bailey. Oh, your dog came in? Yeah, but okay. Charles, can you help? <laughs> She's okay. barking at nothing, but pets don't do that. Don't Bark you... at nothing? Was it a mailman? No, I mean, I, maybe a bird in the yard or something. Charles, she's aimlessly barking, disrupting this fine show. <laughs> you can All right, I'm going to show you my spice rack. Um, so my spice rack is in a drawer. Um, it's not oh, above. Um, that's a so good it's idea. one. Yeah. So I actually find this. Sorry, it's a mess. Or that needs to be a little bit organized. Um, yeah. So what I find is. All right, so this is my spice rack. So I find this setup a little bit easier. Uh, this is my spice box. I find this uh, easier because it lays flat for me. It lays flat and um, I can access it, you know, easily, okay? So I, this is one way to do it, right? Um, so you got some curry, um, you got some nutritional yeast here, cinnamon, uh, chili. I have some saffron. Um, my dad got this from Dubai. Um, let's see what else. This is Berber, uh, Ethiopian spice, cumin. Uh, Why is saffron here. so expensive? It's, it's even more expensive than the vanilla. It's, it's the labor. It's the manual labor um, needed to pick, uh, pick it from the actual flower. Um, it's, you know, saffron is actually good for anxiety. Um, it's, uh, I, so I brew it into a tea. Um, so instead of like a baella, for example, like you could, I get, I just brew it in a tea. I just put a little, like a dash into a cup, pour some water in, it will be yellowish, right? Um, that's the color that it gives off and, uh, that's, and I just drink it like that. So, um, so you can also do like dry, dry herbs. I have parsley, for example. Um, you gotta have some bay leaves. Um, so yeah, this is what, what does I somebody do. Somebody do when they don't have a big of a as big of a kitchen as you. Um, so I would probably say, you know, you you kind of have to make with you have to do what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I understand that the kitchen is going to be different for every uh, every person. Um, so you got to use what you're you know what you can work with. So you know you have cabinets, right? Um, most cabin most kitchens have cabinets, so just use like one section at a time, you know, even if it's something as, uh, let me see, something as, like something as small as this, right? You have like a, a Lazy Susan, you know, something like that, right? Lazy Susan, just put something like small like this. If you go to Bed Bath & Beyond, um, you know, they'll have like many organizers. Um, and so you gotta use what you, what you um, can work with, you know? Um, Okay, so transitioning to, transitioning to, um, so this is my setup, okay? I have some books here, Ratatouille. Um, and so I'm gonna set up um, in terms of- That's funny, board. I have that rat in my kitchen as well. I love it. <laughs> I have him in, Remy, he's in my kitchen too. 
Well, you know, great minds think alike, Chef. Yeah. Agree. Hey, um, Aaron says our spice is really that sensitive to heat. That uh, what was it? That, that uh, I saw it a minute ago. Something about like how how sensitive are spices to heat? Really? Um. What was the rest of the question? Yeah, that comes from air fryers and ovens. Air fryers and oven. Yeah, like our spices, like do spices become less, I guess, nutritious when they're heated? That's the way I interpret it. Um, I think when you're applying heat um, to anything, especially there's a spectrum of cooking techniques, there's a spectrum of cooking techniques. And when you're applying heat to anything, um, you know, you are going to degrade it in some way, you know, when you're taking like a live food, um, especially like live food, you're denaturing enzyme and uh, enzymatic, you know, activity uh, in terms of herbs and spices, um, you know, when you're frying them, for example, you do deplete. I don't know. I can't tell you like the percentage. Give me one second. Norto, the computer, we're not working today. So do not go on the computer. Um, so when we're, when we're, um, you know, applying high heat, like, uh, you know, deep frying, things like that, you know, we are depleting, I can't tell you how much, um, it is. So, uh, if you ever follow Michael Greger, he talks about, uh, age related, you know, products and that's, you know, this is called more of like, um, the process of applying high heat and it creates more, you know, pro oxidants, which creates oxidative stress in your body. So for example, you know, deep frying, boiling, broiling, um, you know, heavy roasting, that's going to create more age relate, uh, related components. And that increases, you know, the propensity of like carcinogenic, uh, carcinogenic uh, pro uh, processes in your body. So, you know, if you're using like, kind of like medium, like parboiling, um, steaming, sauteing, um, you know, these are lesser techniques, you know? Um, and so that can be applied to herbs and spices uh, as well. So um, hopefully that answers the question. And Gina what wants I, to Gina wants to know what Asian type spices do you have in your pantry? Uh, we definitely have variety of, uh, we have five spice. We use uh, white pepper powder. Uh, we use um, different, different grades of soy sauce. Okay. So I know for this show it's, you know, SOS, but we have light soy sauce, dark so uh, soy sauce, and that applies for different dishes. Um, when I, if you check the previous show, when I was making like a Buddha's delight recipe, um, there's different types of soy sauce in terms of cooking that, um, adds to flavoring and coloring, um, you know, in presentation, um, what else, uh, we use, I know this is SOS free, but we use, uh, we use a lot of sesame oil, um, you know, uh, that adds a uh, flavoring, um, uh, for things. Uh, let me see what else. Um, we use white uh, white pepper powder a lot. Um, yeah, that's off the top of my head right now. So nice. And there's a question: if you or your mother make some traditional, Ellen wants to know Chinese style or Korean style dumplings or Vietnamese dumplings, and if so, can you ever demo how to make dumplings? Uh, yeah, we can do that, uh, for the next go around, uh, we'll be back in September. Um, yeah. we're, we're going to have a summer break. Um, and, uh, we're going to have a summer break. Come on, buddy. We're going to have a summer break and we'll demo, we'll demo some, uh, dumplings. Um, That'd be great. Uh, yeah. the spices, both Stephanie and Aaron are saying, like, if you store them above your cab, uh, cabinets and is the heat given off by those appliances bad for them? That's what they're asking. Say that one more time. The heat also so like the some people some people maybe store spices in a cabinet that maybe is above their air fryer or oven, and they're wondering if the heat that those appliances give off could be bad for the spices. That might be a question for Nick, you guys, when he comes on. Nick is the spice guy. That's all he does. Is um, I would probably I would probably say I would probably say the heat doesn't really you know for you mean the the you mean if it's right right next to the stove. Or right above them or something, you know? No, the heat doesn't, the, the heat doesn't go through. The heat doesn't go through. I mean, I, I would be able to tell. It did, I mean, if you're, if you're sectioned off uh, well, it doesn't go through. Um, 
And uh, you'll be able to tell just from the, the texture of the, the, the spice um, um, as well. So, um, and a lot of times you need heat to apply to actually activate, you know? So for example, if you're not using fresh herbs and spices, you know, one technique that we do in school, what is to kind of activate it, you rub them, you know, um, between your hands um, to kind of activate like, you know, dry, dry, dry spices and herbs um, before they go into like a soup and stew or uh, stew, um, you know, things like that. Um, I do want to make a note in terms of the cutting board. Um, whenever you get a cutting board, whether it's something like bamboo or um, like he heavy duty plastic um, or like uh, metal um, or silicone, not silicone, but um, different types of cutting board. The biggest thing you got to do is making sure that number one, it's perpendicular to you. Okay. Um, and what I tell people when I teach them basics is, you know, making sure it's perpendicular to you. Okay. And, you know, you're not, you know, facing like this. Okay. It's perpendicular to its level. Uh, ideally, you want something almost like 90 degrees. Um, so you're comfortable, you know, you're cutting, you know, when you're, when you're cutting, it's, it's, it's comfortable, you know, for you. Okay. And you don't want to be standing off to the side. You don't want to be standing off like this. Um, and in terms of the cutting board, it, it has to be clean and free of stuff as much as possible. Because when you have things that are cluttered, it really messes up the whole energetic space, in my opinion, um, you know, of it. You want to have it, once you're done with one thing, you clean it, you put it into a separate bowl, you either compost it or throw it away, um, and then just get ready for the next one. That's how we sequentially do, do things. Um, and then also, it's also important, um, I have uh, standing mats, okay, nobody. Where I have standing mats where it eases um, the, the fatigue of standing for long periods of time. I think it's very important to get these as well. Um, and so we are, uh, you know, making sure that we are putting less uh, stress on the joints um, when you're cutting and prepping um, everything. But it's very important to have a, a cutting board that's level, you're perpendicular to it because this, you know, messes up your ergonomics and posture and contributes towards like back pain and knee pain and things like that. So from a medical point of view, it's important to, you know, keep these things um, in mind. It may not apply, um, you know, for those that, you know, that work in a commercial kitchen, for example, super important, right? But what if you are preparing for a family event, you're preparing, you know, for just several hours, it's good to keep these things, you know, in mind. So I, I thought that, you know, including these tips um, are important. And, um, you know, basic things would be, you know, making sure you prep everything, you put it back, you wash them, you know, immediately or have someone, you know, support you in doing that. That way the kitchen is, you know, running smoothly and you're not stuck with just all the, you know, all everything in everything in the, um, in the sink, right? Things are just, you know, being washed um, in an inefficient manner. So um, any questions from that? Uh, let me look. I, there is a question about something else from, it was about, uh, yeah, from, just, sorry. Okay, from Dee Dee. You use flax seeds and black cumin seeds that are stored in the fridge in a cool, dry, and dark place, but expired in 2022. So, can you use expired spices? Mm. They were in the refrigerator, she said? Yes, which she says. Yeah. 2022. So sounds like at least half a year. Um, I don't half a year. I probably wouldn't if it were less than three months, I would probably say, okay. Um, one of the benefits of freezing th things is, you know, keeping things, you know, longer. So, you know, I would probably, you know, smell it first just to see if, uh, if it gives off any type of rotten odor. Um, and otherwise you probably wouldn't with flax seeds. So like flax seeds has an oil to it, right? Um, black seed cumin, um, not much oil um, in it. So black seed cumin, you can probably still use the flax seed. I probably wouldn't because 
anything that has oil to it would, you know, be more rancid, um, you know, especially after like an expiration date. Six months is kind of too long, in my opinion. If it were under three months past the expiration date, then I, you know, I probably, um, I probably would have kept it. But six months is a little bit long. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, um, you know, I created this course called Whole Food Plant-Based Transitioning 101 as an audio course. That's in our new app. And uh, we talk about kitchen prep, kitchen orientation, uh, whenever I coach clients um, and or see patients, um, you know, because I also do uh, tele, tele, um, telemedicine visits for lifestyle medicine consults. Um, so we have the abilities to do that. We coach uh, for six month programs. And then you can, you know, see, see me and Naruto and, you know, we'll take care of you. Um, right, Benny? No. He's like, yes, yes. Line up. Any other questions? Um, there is uh, what type of food do you feed your cat? Do you have a special specific brand? Is it wet or dry? I feed him. Um, I use science Hills direct. Um, Science Hills Direct, I use the wet um, and the dry um, version there as well. Um, I also give them uh, cat supplements. Um, I use a company called uh, uh, Standard Process, um, which is not in, uh, in the public market. Um, you kind of have to go through like a, a practitioner in order to get it. Um, they're, they're derived from whole food um, um, uh, sources um, as well. So that's what I give him. He's super energetic. He's a year and what month are we in? Four, five, six. He's a year and a couple months, two or three months old. And he's just super energetic and it makes a big difference. Um, with cat food, you could make your own food. I caution against that because you need to make sure um, cats get taurine um, in their food. Um, and so that's a little bit you know, tougher. I've seen companies where they do fresh food um, and you find that in the refrigerated aisle um, in your local pet store. Um, I don't want to, you know, I'm not a cat expert. So like I don't make the own food. So I know that Science Hill is nutritionally complete. And uh, yeah, and I supplement him with cat supplements. So if you have any questions, you can just personally message me uh, for that um, and I can steer you in the right direction. So when you buy spices, is there an expiration date on the jar or bottle? Because Sunny says, how long can you keep spices? I'm, I, I'm wondering if it does appear on that or not. Because sometimes they um, in bulk. Sometimes they do. Um, so for example, I'm holding curry powder. Um, I do not see. They can keep for a long time. Uh, let me find one that actually has it. Yes, some of them do. So this one does. This one does. Um, let me look at turmeric. A lot of them do. So this one does. Uh, you got to read the label. Yeah, so this is black sea cumin. They keep for a long time. Um, so I would probably say because dry spices and herbs add up pretty quickly, I would probably say buy the ones that you're actually going to use. Okay. Um, and stock up on those. It could easily get, I could easily, and I've had this happen to me too, where you can easily, everything sounds good and you just want to buy them all. They can be very expensive, but if you don't end up using them, then it's going to be a waste. So I would use the ones that, uh, that you're actually going to use. If you're trying new recipes, of course, you know, you know, use them as well. Um, but I would stock up on the ones that you actually use and, um, human is a good one, right? If you ask me, what is a typical, you know, staple pantry, um, in terms of spices, what would you stock yourself with? I would say paprika, cumin, um, let me see what else. Those are good ones. Um, I like to have, you know, rosemary, parsley, cilantro. Uh, I like spicy stuff. So, you know, any type of chili pepper, uh, spices is good. Um, cayenne, garlic. Um, let me see what else. Turmeric, nutritional yeast. And it's also good. There's a difference between dry and fresh. So if you can do fresh and making sure that 
you're using them all, um, buy fresh um, as well. You know, fresh uh, herbs and uh, fresh herbs especially give a different type of flavoring um, as opposed to dry, you know? Um, and so that is important. Pots and pans. Does anyone have questions with pots and pans? Oh. Somebody's asking to see your whole kitchen again. Maybe they tuned in late. Uh, pots and pan question. Uh, somebody saying flax seeds go ransom so quick. Oh, here's one. MJ says, do you have any recommendation for knives for kids like eight years old so they can help in the kitchen? I cut a, I bought a kid's knife from Amazon, but it's not sharp enough to cut raw veggies. Mm. They, um, I don't have a particular brand. Um, there are a lot um, on Amazon that you can purchase. Um, I also, you know, I also teach uh, kids as well. Um, uh, I have a separate healthy kids, uh, uh, healthy kids like company, and we teach, um, uh, we teach uh, kids um, from like five to like early teens, um, and they actually just use the same knives. Um, with parental supervision, um, I think it's important to kind of start them early. Um, probably not start with the bigger knives, but starting them with like, so starting them with like a, something, you know, not as long as like a chef knife, but like more of like a, a sandoku uh, knife. Okay. Which is a little bit shorter. Um, a friend, uh, Usually, uh, this is a bread knife. Um, so this is more of like, this is more of like a, a chef knife. Um, so, you know, something, you know, shorter. The point is to be able to teach them um, how to use it properly, okay? Uh, another skill set that we talk about is holding the knife correctly, okay? A lot of times whenever I do workshops, um, most people don't know how to, use the knife correctly. So how we're taught is you're taking, um, you're taking your three fingers, uh, you're putting it on, uh, you know, around the hilt. Okay. And kind of like the, the base of the knife. Right. And then you're putting your thumb and your index finger, you know, around. Okay. So some of the things that I see is people holding it like this, people holding it like this, um, and this, the weight distribution, throws it off. So when you're ha when you're holding it like this, you're wrapping around it like this, right? Your thumb is over here, your index finger is over here. Then you have pretty good weight distribution and you have pretty good like grip distribution so it doesn't like, you know, fall over and tip over. And the point of it is to prevent injury. The kitchen number one is all about, you know, injury prevention, okay? Um and so Another thing too, making sure you have a first aid kit in uh, the pantry, okay? First aid kit, uh, let me digress for a second. Uh, making sure you have a fire extinguisher, okay? Um, I know Chef AJ questioned, she was like, ah, if I haven't seen a fire extinguisher in the kitchen, like that I actually open. have one in my pantry, yeah. Yeah, it's important. First aid kit, you know, something that, you know, something happens, you can, you know, uh, uh, attend to really quickly. But this is how I hold it, right? Um, and nice skills is literally like an entire class. Um, and it's something that you kind of have to like hone and practice, um, over time. So with a kid going back to a child, going back to, um, your question, the, the audience members uh, question is I actually start them young, um, uh, and actually using a knife with parental supervision. There are there are actual, uh, children knives that there is on the market. Um, sometimes they're uh, serrated. They're like, you know, like this, like they're serrated. Okay. Uh, and that helps with the cutting, right? Um, they're not sharp enough, baby, because, you know, they just, you know, want to prevent uh, injury. So with parental supervision, I actually start them out young. Um, I give them like a smaller knife and then we start using it. Um, I've done workshops in person as well. Uh, with the parents and with the kids and they listen, they listen, um, they listen very intently um, and they hold it, you know, correctly. So I think 
you know, just the skills that I taught you today, like making sure that, you know, you're perpendicular, you're, you know, uh, you're, the body's perpendicular, right? The elbows, you know, I teach all this to kids, you know, holding a knife correctly, um, you know, things like that um, goes a long way. So it sets them up for success as an adult. Um, yes, any other questions? Nice. I do have one medical question that came in with you for you, if you don't mind answering, mm -hmm. just because they specifically said uh, you for this one. And uh, it's from Anne. And she said, I'm dealing with non-alcoholic fatty liver. I've been eating whole food, plant-based, no oil, no sugar, no salt at the table. Are there vegetables that you would benefit eating more of to aid in recovery? How, I wonder how long she's been, uh, she's had a non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver for. Um, that tells me that that is an accumulation um, from something else over time. Um, and whenever you have uh, a fatty liver, that means that the functioning of the liver uh, tends to decrease. So a lot of the liver, the main job, of, one of the main jobs of the liver, it does a, a myriad of jobs, but one of the main jobs is detoxification. And so whenever you're having a fatty liver, that means that over time, I don't know her health history, but over time, um, they have eaten um, dietary fat and dietary cholesterol that has congested the liver um, over time. So she probably wasn't whole food plant-based her entire life. So she would probably, you know, was much acquired, you know, she transitioned to this lifestyle, you know? And so, um, yes, keeping vegan and or whole food plant-based is the way to go. I don't have any specific, um, you know, measures for uh, specific vegetables, you know, for that. Um, there may be, it maybe has come to a point where the fatty liver has, um, has a problem with detoxification. So I definitely would, you know, hook up with a lifestyle medicine provider, um, and, or their primary care to kind of look more, um, into it, but it may be kind of, might have, um, there's a certain liver functioning threshold where, you know, once you go past it, it's a little bit harder for it to kind of like recover. So, um, and you know, non-alcoholic fatty liver is kind of like the new type of cirrhosis. So cirrhosis, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, is where the liver cells um, transform in a way where it becomes irreversible. So it's, you know, claiming to be one of the newer forms of cirrhosis, not just alcohol back in the day. So that tells me right there that she wasn't hopefully plant-based, you know, her entire life, she transitioned. So it's the the accumulation, the bioaccumulation over time that has gotten her liver to that point. So I'd probably say she would need to hook up with a um, uh, lifestyle medicine per, uh, physician um, or their, um, you know, their primary to kind of look more into it. But I don't have any specific um, keeping. If you're having a, a breath and diversity, a whole food plant base, uh, that would be like a good, you know, foundation, but it may be possible her liver might have gone to like a certain threshold where it may be like irreversible. So she has to check into that. It, um, she doesn't give a lot of particulars, but if somebody, and I'm not saying she is overweight, but when people are, does losing weight often help with this? Losing weight um, helps with it. Um, again, you know, in terms of uh, metabolic disease, pre-diabetes, diabetes, you know, fatty liver, a lot of it is the accumulation, lifetime accumulation of having extra dietary, uh, unhealthy fats and cholesterol. Dietary cholesterol only comes from animal, you know, based sources. And, you know, I don't want people to vilify cholesterol because we naturally produce cholesterol for a myriad of metabolic uh, processes. You know, for example, just lining the cell membranes of ourselves, you know, we have, we need cholesterol for that. In addition to, you know, making hormones, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want to, you know, make it seem like we're vilifying, you know, cholesterol, we need cholesterol, but it's the extra, um, accumulated over time, um, that compounds the, the negative, uh, effects. Um, so yeah, um, to answer a question, you know, it's looking at the, you know, the whole, the whole picture and, you know, um, whatever lifestyle you've transitioned to just sticking, you know, with that, you know, and then fine tweaking it with, you know, a coach or a lifestyle medicine, you know, provider, um, and dietitian registered dietitian. So. Right. Okay. Is fibrosis of the liver different? 
I, I, there's a, a vegan who's writing, they have stage three cirrhosis, not cirrhosis, stage three fibrosis. And I guess cirrhosis is the next stage. Mm, fibrosis is kind of like scarring. scarring. So they might be, yeah, fibrosis is scarring. Uh, and I don't know why they would have, you know, scarring um, of that point. Cirrhosis is more defined as the irreversible functionality of liver cells. Fibrosis is something else. Fibrosis is scarring from something, you know, it doesn't really tell me anything uh, specific. So if they don't know why they have fibrosis, they need to, you know, get that uh, checked out. So. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Nice. You can go right from your chef hat to your doctor hat, just in a dime. <laughs> just turn on a dime. Well, this is this is the culinary medicine show, right, Chef AJ? So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, um, Babette says once you have a pile of chopped veggies on your chopping block, do you yeah. use something to scoop them up and store? Yes. Um, so one of the, one of the things, it's a very good question, actually. So one of the things is um So one of the things um, that people do that I don't, that I cringe when this happens is that they'll chop, right? And then they'll use the, the blade of the knife to scoop. This dulls um, the knife really quickly and you don't want to do that, okay? If you, I use a um, vegetable like uh, scraper to kind of like, you know, this is specifically for the actual you know, cutting board. And it doesn't matter if this is dull because I'm not using this to cut, right? So I'm scraping everything together and then putting it into a container, putting it into a bowl, um, putting it into wherever I need. So this is very cheap. You can get this anywhere, you know, um, to get um, a, a scraper. That's what I use. Um, so that way you're not dulling um, your, you know, uh, hard earned, you know, knife. Um, so I typically use um, a scraper. Nice. And um, one of the viewers named Healthy Lifestyle, Stay Fit and Happy asks, what is the safest pots and pans to use? I have nonstick stainless steel and cast iron. Cast iron is good. Um, cast iron, the cons of it is that you have to season it to keep it maintained. Um, you can get extra iron, um, from cooking. Um, cast iron is great, uh, for different preparations of, uh, foods, uh, nonstick, typically in stainless steel apply, uh, pots and pans are not nonstick in general. The, there, there usually is a coating, um, like Teflon or like, uh, they're uh, like Teflon, you know, um, which, you know, has, um, which creates these noxious gases. Um, so I typically don't recommend anything that's nonstick using Teflon. So nowadays um, there's pots and pans that uses ceramic. Um, copper is okay. Copper is a very good conductor, but I typically use stainless steel. I use a ceramic nonstick um, to, you know, for my uh, cooking preparations. Um, I don't use aluminum. Uh, so if you have aluminum, anything, throw them out. Um, or recycle them uh, because you don't want aluminum to leach into, it's a type of heavy metal that you do not want um, in your body. So throw out anything aluminum, okay? Um, I would do stainless steel, uh, cast iron's okay. Um, ceramic nonstick is what I would go for. Uh, a lot of companies like Green Pan, for example, um, use you know nonstick ceramic and nonstick ceramic is very easily available nowadays um, that I would use. Um, let me see what else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I would use. So, so anything aluminum, just throw out yeah. or recycle. I don't, it didn't Dr. Bernard write something in power foods for the brain about cast iron, maybe not be so favorable for everyone because of the iron. Um, I haven't read that particular one. Um, but um, I know that it does impart. So if you have an issue with iron, uh, it's important to kind of see if you have like an issue with iron. A lot of people, um, especially females, depending on what decade they're in, um, tends to have like iron deficiency anemia, right? There is a difference um, with iron that comes from plants versus animal sources, right? So, you know, it's important to kind of talk about it, you know, with, 
whoever you go to, whether it's a health coach or a, you know, primary or lifestyle medicine provider, um, you know, to make sure. So, um, yeah, I don't, I particularly don't ca use cast iron a lot because of the extra steps of needing to season it all the time. And sometimes when you season it, you know, um, sometimes you have to put oil, you have to put a lot of salt on it, you know, to see it's too much maintenance. Um, so I personally don't use cast iron. We typically use um, stainless steel and nonstick uh, ceramic um, that is free of all these other noxious uh, chemicals um, attached to it. So, um, but yeah, I would probably, uh, I'll probably take a look at what uh, Dr. Bernard, um, you know, wrote, but it's important to understand like, where your complete blood count is, you know, where's your hemoglobin is, where, what is your iron studies are at? These are typical things that we talk about in a lifestyle medicine consult. So, you know, for us, we have the extra time. So whenever I conduct a lifestyle medicine consult, we talk about where your magnesium levels are, your vitamin Bs, your Ds, your omegas are at, you know, your zinc, your iodine. Um, and we do all these extra labs to kind of see nutritionally you know, are we, you know, complete, you know, are we getting them from, you know, your whole food plant-based uh, uh, diet or, you know, do we need to supplement, right? And, um, and what are the barriers and challenges in terms of your body and how it handles, you know, certain things like that. Most primary care offices, your family internists, general practitioners, they don't do these extra steps. So that's the benefit of uh, seeing a lifestyle medicine um, consultation is to kind of see where we're at. Uh, and you'd be surprised what you're deficient in. Four places, four pla uh, five places of where, um, four or five places of where most chronic disease comes from, okay? Nutritional deficiency, lack of fiber, okay? Um, oxidative, oxidative stress, okay? Um, uh, dysbiosis, so having an imbalance of your microbiome and chronic inflammation. Okay. Most, if not all chronic, you know, lifestyle related diseases come from these roots. Okay. Um, so when you're eating whole food plant-based, what you're essentially doing is you're lowering your overall chronic inflammation. You're getting the nutrients like your minerals and vitamins, phytonutrients, antioxidants, uh, that will help with oxidative stress. You're feeding the good gut bacteria in your microbiome, right? We have, you're not living with yourself. You're living with 39 trillion other microorganisms and you're increasing the amount of fiber in your diet. 97% of all Americans are deficient in fiber, which is the essential nutrient that no one really talks about. And it's not just having good poops. It's, you know, having good, you know, soluble and insoluble fiber that, you know, helps us, you know, to feel satiated over time, but also helps to regulate cholesterol, your weight, um, you know, helps to improve, you know, your heart disease and mitigate risk, all these different things, plus more, um, it helps to balance your good gut bacteria versus bad gut bacteria um, in your microbiome. So that's another topic, but you know, that's, um, that's the benefits of eating as much whole food plant-based and whenever you're eating whole food plant-based and you're still vegan, you're still having some issues. Like I'm still not feeling like, you know, that optimal or that energized, then, you know, then, you know, we should definitely have a consultation, you know, um, and see what else we need to um, address. So, and it's not just food as medicine. We address all the pillars of lifestyle medicine, sleep, hydration, your social connections and relationships, you know, um, uh, you know, just the, the, your physical activity, whether you're moving or not, you know, all these different things we consider, not just food as medicine. Thanks. Gina says, what about carbon steel plans? Carbon steel what? Pans. Pans? Carbon steel. Yeah. Carbon, carbon steel, steel pans. Hmm. I know carbon steel, we use that material a lot for knives. Um, I don't see that being a problem. Usually it'll probably be mixed with other things. So you got to be, you have to like read, read everything. Um, carbon steel... Uh, we use a lot with, uh, um, with knives and typically it makes them lighter, um, when you're having a mixture, um, uh, of that. Okay, great. And MJ saying, how do you wash a cutting board, especially a wood one? 
Yeah, so a, a wood one, um, I usually just take uh, mild soap and water. Um, uh, I use more of like plant derived soap um, to make it, you know, not as, um, you know, chemically <laughs> on the on the actual uh, uh, board. And then I use, where is it? I use a, um, where did it go? I use um, like a, a mineral oil that coats, I don't have it here for some reason. I use a specific bamboo like mineral oil to kind of coat it um, so it breaks down less. Um, having something as thick as this, um, it, it's gonna take a long time to break down. But to keep, you know, the integrity of, you know, a bamboo, like, you know, wooden, uh, you know, board, I use like uh, a mineral oil to kind of coat it to uh, decrease, to increase the integrity um, of um, the actual um, uh, cutting board, which I cannot find for some reason. So just to show you, but just letting you know that the, it exists. So hopefully that answers your question. Nice. People are worried about plastic cutting boards that plastic can get in the food. Do you think that's true? Um, that's very hard to do. Um, you know, I think getting yourself, um, you know, I, I don't like using plastic. Um, if you're using, it, it's important to, if you are in a family that uses, you know, that eats meat and seafood and all that stuff, I would emphasize cross-contamination um, in terms of the cutting board. So making sure that you have a specific cutting board for meat, a uh, cutting board for seafood, you know, cutting board for veggies. I think, you know, preventing and, you know, um, you know, hygiene, kitchen hygiene is very important. So having separate cutting boards is important. Um, if you're with family members that eat, consume, you know, more animal base, um, that's important to, to be note of. Um, but yeah, plastic, I don't. We, we use them in, in school. We have the heavy duty ones. Um, I probably say it, it probably won't leach into it. Um, but honestly, I just use the wooden just to be safe. So great. Elizabeth, who's watching live and is going to be a guest on Tuesday at 9 a.m. celebrating her 73rd birthday and making some very delicious recipes like an exotic homemade appetizer dip and oat cups topped with creamy date caramel. That's a pitch for your show, Elizabeth. Uh, she wants to know what's the difference between iron and ferritin? Um, so iron is the actual mineral. Ferritin is the stores. So ferritin is, um, it tells us how much uh, actual, um, uh, how much iron is stored up. Okay, so it's kind of like treasure chests, if you think about it like that. So the lower ferritin is, the lower the amount of iron stores um, uh, that you have, right? So essentially, you could go towards the um, end of being anemic, um, and so you would have to be like replenished. So iron is kind of like what's floating about, and ferritin is what is actually stored. So if you're having low ferritin levels, then that needs to be you know, addressed. Um, it's important to know which type of iron you're intaking um, because that makes a difference. Whether you're taking vitamin C with it, that makes a difference. Um, and where it's sourced from, that makes a difference. Um, so these are questions to ask your provider, your physician, um, or a lifestyle um, medicine you know, provider. So. Um, so yeah, I hope, hopefully that answers your question. Right. And MJ says, where can she find out about your kids class? So the kids class, um, is a newer company. Uh, we are, uh, we haven't made it, uh, to totally it's in beta phase. So we are testing it in terms of school systems, school curriculums, um, we are hoping, uh, to roll it out pretty soon. So we're still, uh, we're still in the beta testing right now. Um, and what we've done is kind of beta tested for like a summer curriculum and also like a fall curriculum going around summer schedule and back to school schedule. Um, and just, you know, the, the, the breakdown of it is really teaching culinary skills and nutritional education. So I work with a hopefully plant-based like 
RD. And her and I, we lead the class um, and we teach, you know, um, kiddos um, virtually across the screen. And we teach them similar to like how I teach you guys, um, but just a little bit more emphasis um, in terms of practical skills and getting them set uh, set up for success. So definitely stay tuned uh, for that. Um, and we'll roll out, you know, more news um, as it comes. So as you know, when you're building anything newer, um, it takes some time and planning. So that sounds great. Thank you. Elsa. How are we doing? How are we doing with time, Chef AJ? Oh, I, I we went over, but that's okay. Um, oh, we went you, over. I thought but, we went but, under. No, but if you have to go, it's okay. I'm just looking if there's. It's just it was really a really interesting episode, and people are commending you on being able to flip from doctor to chef and back and forth. Uh, there was a question from uh, Linda about nutritional yeast, and what brand do you like? Um, I like the Braggs. Um, Braggs has been, you know, uh, around for some time. Um, and, uh, you know, I have no qualms about it. Um, it's, it's typically my, you know, go to, um, it's good for anything savory, um, as well. I do put it a little bit into, um, you know, smoothies sometimes, uh, just to kind of test it out and see how it would taste. Um, that's a natural way of getting more bees, uh, B12, um, into your system. Um, you know, bees, vitamin Bs are water soluble. So they they are, you know, you typically, you know, pee this out, right? Because you have water soluble vitamins, you have fat soluble vitamins, right? Fat soluble vitamins are D, E, A, and K and, uh, waters are like, you know, like the bees, right? And bees are, you know, in food, they're in your whole grains. So this is the reason why we tell people um, to eat more whole food intact sources. So for example, white rice, right, or stripped down, right? I'm sure other guests have talked about this before. It's stripped down. A lot of the outer coating contains vitamin Bs as well as the fiber, but you're stripping that down when you're creating the white, you know, um, like white rice, for example. And why do we strip them down? Because they taste better. You're reducing it down to the singular, you know, carbohydrate, the singular, you know, um, uh, um, you know, sweetness of it, right? So when you're eating more of the shell, the whole intact, the taste is different, right? Brown rice is, the taste is different than white rice, you know, for those that love rice, right? For example, right? And um, so when you're stripping the outer coating, then you are stripping a lot of bees, you know, and bees are important for so many different things. It's, you know, especially B12, for example, whether you're a carnivore or a vegan, you have to supplement, you know, for that because of modern agriculture messing things up and it just doesn't come with it anymore. So you have to supplement it. Um, and so, but you can also get it from whole food plant based and nutritional yeast is, you know, good, a, a natural, easy way of getting, getting that incorporated. So nice. What, do, did, what are you having for lunch or dinner today? Did you already decide? Um, I did not decide yet. Um, you know, usually, you know, we decide as a family because we usually feed all of us. So I was not gone down, down that route yet. So, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. but I, I appreciate everyone's uh, questions. Um, you know, again, for those of you that know me, you can visit my website, thechefdoc.app. Um, we have an app. Um, to help people get educated um, and to kind of learn on demand. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, to help people change their, you know, lifestyle and behavioral habits, because that's really the foundation. It's not about, it's not just about the food and, you know, it's not about, you know, eating less and moving more. It's really fundamentally, you know, changing the lifestyle and getting to the root of the problem. So I do coaching programs. I see people, I consult people lifestyle medicine wise. So you can find all that on my website and uh, yeah. And uh, you know, Naruto's a new, new addition. So definitely I, I already follow followed, well. I put it in the link to follow him on Instagram and I already did. But tell him yeah, to we'll follow put that, me. We'll put that in the show notes too. We'll put that in the show notes. I too. did, but tell him to follow me back. I will. I will. He's busy. I mean, he I went know, off I and I get he it. got He's... bored. He got hey, bored hey. and he just went off. You know, I'm curious. You showed you, you showed you're almost out of brown rice. Do you buy it like, because it was in a very small container. You don't buy it like in 50 pound bags or anything like that? Uh, we do, but we just transfer it to um, 
to to jars. So we have a lot of jars. Do you have like um, a favorite brand or type? And do you also eat white rice? Because I love white rice. So tell me. I love white rice too, but we don't anymore. We uh, transitioned. My dad's very sad. Uh, we transitioned um, a lot. Um, and, uh, typically we do all kinds of rice. I think last time we talked about this, we did like, we have like red rice, we have, you know, forbidden rice, which is like more of a, like a black rice. Um, it's just so many varieties of rice. Uh, I remember the first time when I had basmati rice for the first time we were in London, we went to this Indian place and it was like heaven. Right. Um, but you know, uh, we don't eat, um, you know, that as much in Asian cuisines, rice is like. Rice is like life, you know, for us, you know, and, um, you know, we just kind of pile it on in Asian cuisines. We use rice as like, you know, because we eat family style. So a lot of the dishes, you know, in the middle of everything um, tends to be packed with flavor and sometimes can be very overbear overbearing and overwhelming. So we use rice to kind of like offset that, you know, in terms of, you know, everything. And, you um, it means, it means different things culturally to different cultures. So, um, you know, a lot of aspects when we talk about nutrition, we don't talk about as much about the cultural um, meaning behind it and what it means for a certain ethnic group. And so um, as a practitioner, as a provider, as a coach, I have to be very cognizant of that, you know, and, and also as a person of color, you know, I have to be very cognizant of that because, you know, Food means something different to all of us. You know, it's emotional. It's how we express love and affection. It could also be very political and very, you know, emotional charging, um, very financial. So it's it, it's uh, it means something different for all of us. So that does not, you know, it, you know that does not escape me one bit. You know, so you know we talk a lot about nutrition on the show. I'm sure, and we talk about you know it being a medicine. But when you go behind that, you know, it's a lot of different things, social, economically, health disparities, um, you know, uh, food inequities, um, you know, we have problems with food access, we have problems with food deserts. So food is a very, um, there's many aspects and layers to food. So it's not just nutrition. So that does not escape me, for example. So, do so you yeah. Have a, do you have a preferred rice cooker or do you cook it the old fashioned way just on the stove? No, we use a rice cooker. That is the old fashioned way for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, it's the old fashioned way is the rice cooker. And uh, we use the, you know, the first knuckle, you know, trick, you know, to uh, make uh, rice and uh, stove is prepared differently. Um, and um, yeah, we can just, honestly, there's no brand. You can just pick up any rice cooker and most of them are really good on the market. So if you go to like an Asian supermarket, um, you know, uh, you know, they'll have, you know, you can just get one and, um, they'll have really good quality ones. So, um, but yeah, um, we won't be back until September. So, you know, I appreciate everyone's questions. Um, you know, I also have a YouTube channel, um, you know, so you guys could follow me there. There's a lot of great stuff there. Um, I interview a lot of great people, um, and, re and do a lot of reporting as well. So, um, we also have a podcast, um, so definitely, you know, follow us there. Um, any other questions, just reach out to us. You know, we have a contact, you know, page and, uh, either me, my team or Naruto will be answering those, uh, emails. And, uh, yeah. So I appreciate, you know, being here on the show, Chef AJ. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful hosting you. And, uh, and Susanna saying any plans to write a book and if you did, would it include recipes? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm presuming she means like a cookbook. Uh, I do have plans, um, maybe by next year. Um, I do have plans to write two more books as a follow-up to my original book, Thrive Medicine. So, um, you know, so I have plans to do that, uh, for this year. Cookbook will probably be the soonest. It'll probably be, maybe be like next year, something like that. And I'm sure, you know, uh, Chef AJ, it takes a lot of time and planning and all that. So, uh, Yes, that you don't is have in, to tell me. The, oh my gosh, people don't. That, that is in, that yeah. is in the works, and I I get a lot of people asking me that. So um, yes, so stay tuned. So yeah, Renee's question I don't quite understand, Renee, but I'll ask it. When will Doctor Zoo get certification to treat in MS? Yeah, I mean you can treat it right now, can't you? You're a doctor, and I don't know if there's a certification. Um, you don't need a certification to treat MS. Um, from a primary care standpoint is about recognition um, of when, you know, things uh, happen. 
Um, oh, and then wait, wait, wait. to treat in MS. I'm sorry. MS is like the abbreviation of a state. Oh my God. I am so sorry. Oh, like I, I apologize, Renee. I, thought, I am. I don't know my abbreviations for states. Apparently MS is for Mississippi. Mississippi. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I'm not uh I'm not I'm not licensed in Mississippi. I think oh. one of us are in Love Life. Um so I work with one out of uh 10 physicians. We are licensed in all 50 states. Um I I personally have 10 uh state licenses, so I apologize if I don't have your state. Um currently I'm not planning on getting more um because an incredible amount of time, paperwork and resources takes um, is involved in getting a state license. Um, if it were easy, I would have all 50 by now, but it's not. Um, but between the 10 of us, we are licensed in all 50. So in the show notes that, you know, when this airs, um, you know, it will tell you which state I'm licensed in, um, in the show notes. So definitely make an appointment if you're interested. Um, all the links are there. Um, but yes, I appreciate, um, you know, <laughs> I appreciate the question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm going to have to, you know, I, in my defense, I skipped fourth grade and I never learned geography. So I didn't know that MS meant Mississippi. I mean, we're talking to a doctor. I thought it was multiple sclerosis. That's what I thought too. And then, oh my and then God. That's, how, that's how the question was posed. Well, and we'll then, have a good then, laugh at this one day. <laughs> Okay. Well, you do comedy, Chef AJ, so yeah. it's all about the laugh, yeah, right? I think I'm performing June 19th, so if you're on where my are you Where are you performing? Where are you performing? Well, just, I, I mean, the improv, I can perform live at a place called The, the Spot in Sacramento, but uh, the, the, the stand-up we're still doing online, online. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you go on a tour and you come down to, you know, LA or Orange County, let me know, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Zoom. This has been wonderful. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for Chef Dell's Kitchen. And he's going to be doing a first summer picnic. Look at this, Listen to these recipes, guys. He's going to be making barbecued cauliflower florets, florets with peppers, onions, and pineapple with summer's best barbecue sauce, a ginger tamari jackfruit, a T-O-U-M, a Lebanese garlic dip, and a curried chickpea salad with a curried mayonnaise. So you will not want to miss tomorrow's show. Take care, everyone.